Hello, I'm Gerald Bayer. I'm going to present this tutorial on eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a matrix because these are relevant concepts for quantitative biological research. To start, let me first switch to the presentation mode. The eigenvalues and eigenvectors of L form part of Unit 2.1, which is designed around a discrete time model of bacterial aging. Now, before we go into the technical parts, let me say that matrices often appear in biology in the context of interaction tables meaning that networks can be characterized by how strongly or how weakly nodes of a network interact with each other. Specifically, if we look at this red node, it's connected to one blue node, but it's also connected to all other blue nodes. And these interactions can be quanti if they can be quantified, they can be put into a table, which then summarizes all of the interactions. Um, specifically here, we look at the Leslie matrix as a special interaction matrix that comes from population models that look, for example, at how bacterial populations grow from generation to generation type of Leslie matrix in a general form that you might have seen earlier in the material looks like shown here, where specifically the values R1 through R5 refer to how strongly does the first population interact with all other populations, including itself. So let's look at the discrete time dynamic model, the Leslie matrix model looks like this as written as an equation where n on the left side of the equation refers to the number of individuals at time t plus 1 and it's related to the number of individuals at t time at time t via the leslie matrix so if we take then the specific values that you have encountered in the textbook then we can say from numerical simulations that this model shows that as time goes by the populate all populations will keep growing but the population proportions of each of the population will become constant that means technically expressed proportions go to a steady state and at steady state we can formulate the condition as an equation, namely the population proportions at time t are exactly the same as those at time t plus 1. You can also visualize that graphically. Probably you have done so yourself using MATLAB. Now if you use the original formulation of the model and substitute this into the steady state condition, then we get the new term here in this expression and after rearranging this a little bit we come up with an equation that relates the population at time t to the population at time t but the important thing is what is in front of those namely I'll formulate it again on this side it can be simplified to an expression lambda n equal Leslie matrix times n if we realize that lambda is just a number, namely the proportion, the uh, ratio between population at time t plus 1 over the population at time t. This is a very important relationship and we're going to try an interpretation of this for our purpose here. At steady state for which this relation is derived, there is a special population vector n and it is associated with a constant number lambda. You can see on the left side lambda exactly the same place where on the right side we have this special matrix, the Leslie matrix. And just 
as a class uh, as a definition the special vector is called the eigenvector and the associated number lambda is the corresponding eigenvalue of the Leslie matrix L. So now we look at the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues numerically. We get those, there are three eigenvectors for a 3 by 3 matrix and there are three eigenvalues. We get them from using, for example, the function eig, eig in MATLAB and you can see the output, screen output here. The way to look at it is you have to read it vertically. Each column of the V matrix on top is the eigenvector that belongs to the eigenvalue just below it. And now we're going to look at the eigenvector corresponding to the largest eigenvalue um, framed in red here because we can use it to get the growth rate of the model and we can even get the constant population proportions at steady state. The largest eigenvector has a numerical value of about 1.04 and because it's larger than 1, we already see that this will lead to an explosion. Um, explosion because at each subsequent step the population will be, grow, will be larger than in the previous step. And the exact value is just the growth rate that the model predicts, namely the growth rate that is constant once the, proportion popu the population proportions have reached steady state. So we can then look at what are the population proportions. They are given by the corresponding eigenvector. And we remember graphically what that looks like. What we are looking for are the numbers where these primary, uh, that firstly zigzagging curves level off. So we can look at the eigenvector directly, but we need to normalize it. Once we normalize it, what is normalization? It's done here. It's made such that the three, the three components of the vector added together add up to one. And if we do this, then these numbers are exactly the numbers that we find in numerical simulation. But keep in mind that looking at the eigenvector corresponding to the largest eigenvalue, we have found this result without even doing a single simulation. In fact, the simulation can now be thought of as a confirmation of this analytical result. Finally, or more as a side remark, I would like to mention that also the other two eigenvalues have certain meaning in them although not for the steady state calculation, but the fact that they are both negative indicates um, that the behavior, the temporal behavior will be zigzagging or going up and down, so-called subharmonic behavior. And the fact that both values are absolute values are less than one tells us that the amplitude must be shrinking as time goes by. But I uh, don't go further here, I just thought this is mathematical detail. Read the mathematical background for further information. And we conclude here this tutorial. And I would like to recommend that you continue with section 112, which then relates to um, literature published model on bacterial aging.